A new set appears with many new champions, items, and pretty much everything else. The Rise of the Elements introduces many elemental synergies and maps. We also see changes to the overall direction of the game, with champion pools being reduced, many items being nerfed and buffed, mana generation changes, and so on. We're going to review over notes for patch 9.22 and the many changes it brings. But first, I'd like to remind you to click on the link below and take a look at ProGuides.com if you want to learn more about teamfight tactics. ProGuides will always have info on the newest patches, best builds, and strategies. There are all kinds of different resources from top players to help you be the best player that you can be, including coaching. So be sure to check out ProGuides.com using the link in the description. Alright, let's get right back into the video. Now, let's start with general changes. We're starting with map changes, the board increasing by an entire row. This opens up a lot more space to position around AoE while giving you more freedom with the elemental tiles. This also increases the strength of assassins, making it harder to protect your backline with a bigger map. Player damage goes from 3, 3, 3, 4, 5, 6 to 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, increasing the late game damage but making the first few rounds a lot easier on you. Speaking of damage, with the introduction of the Summoner class, summoned units do not deal damage to you directly if you lose. However, if the Summoner is killed before the round ends, their damage is counted for if their summoned units are alive. To give an example, if Malzahar summons his Voidlings but dies during the round, he still deals damage to you if the Voidlings are alive. Moving on, level 8 gets slight changes to its drop rates, with 5 costs going from 8 to 6% drop rate and increasing the 4 cost drop rate from 22 to 24%. Finally, when you pick up an item on Carousel, you can no longer collide with other little legends, both of these being very minor changes. Moving on to ranked changes, you can no longer lose LP getting top 4. Simultaneously, you can no longer gain LP at bottom 4. This is a slight change more directed for those in higher elo. For regions, we see changes to the total amount of challengers and grandmasters to different regions. Korea, Vietnam, and China will have 300 challengers and 700 grandmasters. EUW and North America will have 200 challengers and 500 grandmasters. For every other region, they will only have 50 challengers and 100 grandmasters. That's all for rank changes, so let's move on to some big changes towards the champion pools. The champion pools are seeing an overall decrease, making it a lot more important to scout your enemy teams. One cost units get a massive decrease from 39 to 29. Two costs get a moderate decrease from 26 to 22 units. Three costs get decreased from 18 to 16. Four costs get decreased from 13 to 12. And finally, five costs remain unchanged, staying at only 10 units. This means you have to scout a lot more frequently. Contested comps are harder to go for, so watch out. Next up, there are slight mana generation changes. All 1-star champions gain 8 mana per attack, 2-star champions gain 10 mana per attack, and finally, 3-star champions gain 12 mana per attack. Mana generated from taking damage was reduced by 15% as well. These changes aren't too significant, except for the mana generated from taking damage being reduced. This makes frontlining units directly a lot more risky, most likely needing supporting tanks alongside them as well. We see a lot of item changes, more specifically towards spatula items due to the removal of many synergies. Spatula and Needlessly Large Rod make Inferno's Cinder, making a unit into an Infernal. Spatula and Tear of the Goddess make Mage's Cap, making a unit into a Mage. Spatula and a Chain Vest make Warden's Mail, making a unit into a Warden. Spatula and Negatron Cloak turns into Talisman of Light, making a unit into Light. And finally, Spatula and Sparring Glove makes Berserker's Axe, making a unit into a Berserker. Talking about spatula items, they no longer give double stats, only giving stats to the item used to make it. So Mage's Cap only gives 20 mana. Death Cap's ability power amplification goes from 50% to 75%, which is insane. Dragon Claw's magic resistance gets reduced from 75% to 50%, being a pretty significant nerf overall, making it a lot more unfavorable. Giant Slayer receives nerfs from 5% maximum health true damage on hit to 8% current health as physical damage. This nerf is pretty significant, greatly reducing how much damage this item does, especially since it went from true to physical damage. Moving on, these are mostly minor changes and not really worth noting. Chain Vest and Negatron Cloak get their resistances increased from 20 to 25. Guardian Angel gets the health from reviving reduced from 500 to 400, being a slight nerf but still probably remaining as a strong item. Hand of Justice gets its damage amplification buff increased from 40% to 50%, and the bonus on hit health increased from 40 to 50. Ionic Spark has its damage reduced from 125 to 100. Luden's Echo was decreased from 180 to 150 damage while always going off once per spell cast. 
Recurve Bow attack speed was reduced from 20% to 15%. Runan's Hurricane gets reduced from 75% to 60% and no longer stacks on itself. So one Runan's Hurricane gives one bolt. Two Runan's Hurricane gives two bolts. Finally, Thief Gloves has the value of their items increased at levels 8 and 9. That's about it for item changes. To finish our patch notes rundown, there are slight quality of life changes to the UI. Champions that contribute to a trait will have their portrait and tier information in the tooltip. So if you're unsure which units you need for your Infernal Synergy, just hover over Infernal on the bar on the left. If you want to learn all about the new synergies and champions though, make sure to check out our previous guide on them. Now that we've finished going over patch 9.22 changes, let's get into our predictive item tier list. Remember that set 2 just became live, so feel free to let us know in the comments below on things you've tested that were super strong or super weak. This is just what our challenger analysts predict, but we'll be sure to update this list again in the near future. Starting off on our S tier list, we have Morella Namicon, Rageblade, Iceborne Gauntlet, Mage's Cap, Thieves Gloves, and Zephyr. Starting with Morella Namicon, this item is extremely strong at all stages of the game, most effective on AoE units like Syndra or Singed. The amount of damage the item can provide against compositions like Summoners, Wardens, or Mystics can be insane, while negating healing from Redemption or Janna. Next in this list, we have Rageblade. This item remains prominent even after set 1, being a core item on many AD carries and just scaling insanely well in general with mages as well. The scaling attack speed is useful at generating mana and dishing out a ton of damage in extended fights. Iceborne Gauntlet is next on this list. The attack speed debuff on this item is ridiculous and synergizes extremely well with Jax or Wind Synergy and Wind Map. This not only makes it harder to kill your tanks, but also can provide a massive attack slow to the enemy team. Mage's Cap arrives as a new item, having a powerful synergy in six mages. This allows you to replace weaker early game mages like Vlad or Talia with a unit that greatly benefits off the double cast. Zed is one example, with Mage Cap allowing him to summon two clones per ultimate, which can snowball out of control pretty quickly. Lux is an obvious choice for this, giving her double casts lets her effectively get her mana refund a lot more consistently, which in return lets her ult again and again and the cycle continues. Thief Gloves still remains at the top as well, being a valuable item on any unit and provides a ton of stats overall. This item's adaptability and effectiveness gives it an S tier. And finally, we have Zephyr. This item was somewhat decent in the last set, but with the introduction of elemental tiles, we believe this to be an S tier item. Most people would want to put priority units on elemental tiles, like their strongest tank on mountain or main carries on infernal. Because these tiles are placed directly on the opposite side of your board, you can easily put Zephyr onto your units standing on elemental tiles to get their strongest champions out of the fight. On to our A tier list. We have Runan's Hurricane, Infinity Edge, Force of Nature, Berserker's Axe, Redemption, Rabadon's Deathcap, Arcane Gauntlet, Trap Claw, Rapid Fire Cannon, Luden's Echo, and Static Shiv. Let's start off with Runan's Hurricane, receiving a major change of no longer requiring a spatula, replacing Cursed Blades recipe. This item is A tier because of its ability to spread on hit effects like red buff while providing an extra 60% damage to every auto as long as they are in range. This item is powerful on carries like Twitch, Ash, and Sivir, but by itself needs more support to be truly effective. Moving on to Infinity Edge being the best crit item in the game. The crit damage bonus, the extra crit chance, and the bonus AD makes this item ridiculously strong, especially on carries like Kha'Zix. Force of Nature is next on the list, being a strong item in general. While its cost is expensive, being two spatulas, it's always good in general if you're not particularly using spatulas in your comp, and an extra unit is always handy. Next up, Berserker's Axe. Being a strong item with the ability to apply on hit effects in a cone, we think this item has a lot of potential, being especially strong on units like Master Yi, who gets a massive attack speed buff with bonus on hit damage. This item does not work well on ranged carries though, as it forces them to jump into melee range. Redemption is next on our list. Though being weak to Morella Namicon and Red Buff, the item is insanely powerful in general, especially with tankier compositions. The sustain it provides can help you win streak in the early and mid game, where people might not usually have grievous wounds. Now to Rabadon's Death Cap, receiving major buffs from a 50% ability power amplification to 75%. This alone makes Rabadon's Death Cap give an insane amount of AP. This in combination with other rod items like Morella Namicon, Rage Blade, or Ionic Spark gives a large amount of bonus AP per item. Another A tier item is Arcane Gauntlet, being a strong item on ability power carries like Lux or Brand. This item in combination with items like Infinity Edge can lead to an insane amount of burst in comparison to Rabadon's Death Cap direct increase. Speaking of sparring gloves items, Trap Claw is also on the A list, providing a decent stun to anyone trying to hurt your backline carry. This is a good defensive tool against champions like Kiana or LeBlanc, who typically want to stun your backline. 
Rapid Fire Cannon is next on the list, being a great defensive item for ranged carries. With the increase to map size, they can keep themselves at a safe distance while also gaining attack speed from Rapid Fire Cannon. Luden's Echo is a strong early item, synergizing with fast casters like Kog'Maw, Ezreal, and Kindred. The damage it provides is decent, but falls off later into the game. Last but not least, we have Static Shiv. This item becomes a bit stronger with the removal of Knights. The item is strong on any carry if you're looking for a strong early and mid game, though typically being outshined by Rageblade towards the late game. Moving on to our B tier list, we have Phantom Dancer, Frozen Heart, Deathblade, Seraph's Embrace, Hand of Justice, Spear of Shojin, Hush, Swordbreaker, Titanic Hydra, Gunblade, Warmogs, Bloodthirster, Giant Slayer, Talisman of Light, Quicksilver Sash, and Red Buff. Phantom Dancer is here to start us off for B tier items. This item is a decent defensive item, especially if someone is running Infinity Edge. It negates your carries from being burst down by assassins like Kha'Zix. However, the item essentially does not do anything if they don't crit, and useless against magic damage without Arcane Gauntlet. Now to Frozen Heart being a decent defensive item, the attack speed slow it provides can be strong, and it synergizes really well with units like Singed, Zed, and Kha'Zix. And our next item is Deathblade, seeing more play with many items getting nerfed. The AD it provides is insanely strong with carries like Sivir or Twitch, capable of stacking insanely fast. It also serves as a strong counter item against summoner comps, since every summon gives it an additional stack. Seraph's Embrace is a decent item, providing 40 mana and an additional 20 mana per cast. There's a lot more units that synergize with it, like Kha'Zix, Ezreal, and Kindred. This item is decently strong, even on units like Brand, giving a 40 mana boost. Hand of Justice is up next, providing decent damage and on-hit health. The damage buff is insane, while the on-hit health buff might be decent early, it does fall off later into the game. Spear of Shojin is somewhat decent to provide mana for carries like Malzahar, Brand, or Zed with insanely high mana costs and want to repeatedly use their ability. The item is essentially useless on low mana cost units, and some units don't really want to spam their ultimate. Hush, Swordbreaker, Titanic Hydra, Red Buff, and Giant Slayer are decent on hit items in this patch, but fall in strength with Gunslingers being removed. While Berserkers are strong as well, like Olaf or Mundo, these items are decent for them, but not meta-defining. Gunblade, Warmogs, and Bloodthirster are all decent sustained items to keep your carries alive. However, Grievous Wounds counters these items extremely hard, making them almost useless, only leaving them as B-tier. Talisman of Light arrives onto the battlefield, being a strong item to hit 6 or 9 light, but anything less is usually not worth it. With it only fitting into one composition, it only gets a B tier. And finally, we have Quicksilver Sash. This item only gets a B tier due to the new champions having significantly less crowd control. Units like Nami can be positioned around, and units like Malphite have a small stun radius. This item can be decent if you're running a single hyper carry, but otherwise is quite low in power. Moving on to the weaker items, we have Zeke's Herald, Repeated Crossbow, Inferno Cinder, Yomu's Ghost Blade, Locket of the Iron Solari, Ionic Spark, and Dragon's Claw. First up is Zeke's Herald. This item is underwhelming and provides pretty small benefit. It's typically not worth it, being somewhat okay in Assassins. Repeated Crossbow is next, being far too inconsistent, requiring your units to die, and for it to hit your carry, they need to have an open slot. These are difficult and random conditions to meet, making the item not necessarily worth it. Inferno Cinder is also in the C list, being a subpar item for a synergy that's somewhat average. It does a moderate amount of damage and only starts becoming noticeable around 6 Inferno, which can be hard to get. Speaking of a spatula item, there's also Yomu's Ghost Blade, being pretty bad as many units don't utilize the Assassin synergy that well. Its benefit is also somewhat weak, with the bonus crit chance and damage being underwhelming. Locket of the Iron Solari still remains at the bottom, being a decent item for anti-burst, but otherwise doesn't provide anything else besides stats. Ionic Spark is next in the list, receiving nerfs and overall just being underwhelming. 100 true damage is not that much in comparison to a lot of other items, only being good against units like Kindred. And finally, we have Dragon's Claw. This item is still somewhat strong, being decent at blocking magic damage, but with its nerf to only block 50%, it's very underwhelming and leaves room for better items. And to the final part of our list, we have the D tier items. For this, we have Blade of the Ruined King and Frozen Mallet. Blade of the Ruined King and Frozen Mallet are both spatula items that are simply just not worth it. It's difficult to fit Blade Master with Rangers and Berserkers, and also doesn't provide that strong of a benefit. Frozen Mallet is worse than Blade Master, providing an extremely underwhelming synergy. And that's it for today. Since this was a predictive tier list, we're excited to play the new patch live on the servers now. This new patch brings a lot to the table, with many new items rising in strength. What do you guys think of the new meta, and what items do you feel are OP? Do you think any of the new spatula items are worth it? Let us know in the comments below. Until then, we'll see you guys in the next video.